we can go live here. Oh, okay, we are live. Good. All right. We are live on Periscope. So let me load this in, the, in our bracket here so that we can broadcast. We have a lot of different things happening at the same time. All right. Let me get this in here. All right, it's looking good. Looks like it's broadcasting. And uh, let's see, we're going to have to get on to our... Uh, all right, let's see. Let me... Uh, all right. And we're going to go here on Facebook now. Let's see. All right, this looks like it took. So we're loading up there. And uh, we're live on Facebook. And let me uh, bring this up a little bit. All right, looks like everything's good. to get everything set up here a little bit. Get these cameras <coughs> adjusted, right? And things will work right. Alright, so. Just a little issue there with with the uh, let's try this again here. We got two cameras pointing at me and so <laughs> I'm trying to get it going, and I'm listening to myself on the internet radio. So, walking and chewing gum is a tough thing for the old man Norman here, alright? So, alright, well I made some notes today. And uh, also I wanted to tell the uh, internet uh, radio at godspokesman.com if you have some, uh, you have an email, you can send your email, questions, comments, or thoughts. This is for the listeners on the internet radio station. <coughs> you can send your questions and thoughts to questions at godspokesman.com. Uh, all right. And so I can, uh, I'm broadcasting live and, uh, I can see here on my screen here on my other laptop that you can't see right here. We're broadcasting live on it through our internet radio station. And if you want to send an email, comment, request, prayer request, whatever, you can send it to questions at godspokesman.com. And I can see it right there. And of course, you that are on Periscope, you know what you can do, right? You can just send it right on in your little chat deal right there. And the same thing here on Facebook. As you know, Facebook, you can do it too, all right? All right, looks like we're set up here. thirty first of March, all right? And I'm looking outside here, I'm looking out the back window in our home here, and the sky is cloudy. It's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been raining off and on, cloudy, overcast. But this is typical late March, early April weather. April showers is the normal every year. It's the same way. It's just kind of a, everything's starting to bloom. God's watering everything. You got a big sprinkler can, shall we say. So, <clears throat> as usual, we'll do our uh, updates. I noticed uh, I've been writing some really uh, tough things on Instagram and uh, post on Twitter and all of our accounts, and uh, I can see that our viewership has really dropped off writing some things. Boy, some people really must have got ticked at what I said, so they're not coming back so much. And uh, 
I can tell you that is that's the norm. It's not the that's not the ad norm. All right. If everybody's saying how good and great you are, you better watch out. All right. I'm not here to win your support. All right. And because I know that the most of you are really clueless about this thing about Jesus Christ and being spiritually born again. All of these so-called religious denominations <coughs> under the umbrella of being a Protestant, they're not really truly saved people. They're not spiritually born again. Now don't misunderstand. They're religious people, good, decent, moral people going to hell. They're not spiritually born again. They don't believe in the Bible. They don't practice the Bible. They practice what some man wrote, and they're following what some guy wrote, just like Hindu, Buddha, Mohammed, and the popes of the Roman Catholic Church. Anything they say, they, people do it blindly. We're broadcasting on WordPress, Periscope, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Google+, VK, and Path. Today, I'll give you the stats. On Periscope, first off, we're at 29,967 views, 253,913 hearts, views on Facebook. On YouTube, we're at 19,035 views on YouTube. All right, and again, I show the people here on Facebook Live and Periscope Live a little map about where Missouri is. And that uh, Picasso map is my doing. I'm a, I can trace pretty good. Huh? <laughs> So that's Missouri, right in the center of the U.S. That's for you folks that can't see the picture on the radio. Uh, again, this is my favorite little saying. I'm going to say it again. The scriptures alone, this is not scriptural. This is, some, this is what someone wrote, and I agree with this. The scriptures alone set forth the true reason of our being in this world. Not for enjoyment, but for trial. Not to gain temporal pleasures or possessions, but that our souls may be disciplined and prepared for immortal honor and glory. Now, mind you, I didn't say you have to live in rags and, and rags and extreme poverty. I didn't say that. The scriptures alone set forth the true reason of our being in this world. Not for enjoyment. What does that mean, not for enjoyment? For you to work your 9-to-5 job and go partying and do everything you want with your family anytime you want. And, and the gospel message is, is like 20 minutes of time on when you go to church, if you go to church. But most of you don't do that faithfully. Not for enjoyment. The scripture is not for your enjoyment. Something you read and say, oh, wow interesting story like a movie or something but the, the the message of the scripture the reason is that you're gonna have trials in your life and the reason you're gonna have trials is not that you're gonna you hear this old saying if you don't succeed the first time get up and keep going do it again do it again and eventually you'll get the American dream you'll be a success. That's not what this means. When I say, not for enjoyment, but for trial, not to gain temporal pleasures or possessions. You understand? It's not to gain those things. That's not the purpose. You're going to receive and get things as you mature in God through life. But it, the purpose of the scriptures is not for you to make a buck on it. Hello, preacher men out there living on the on the, I want to say on the lamb. I, I think you are in one sense, and lamb being that you're running, and that's what you're running from the faith in God. You got to put your trust in people. 
but that our souls, again, that our souls may be disciplined, all right, and prepared for immortal honor and glory. You have when you're dealing with God and God things, it's by faith. Faith in things not seen. But what the scripture says, you have to believe that. If you're spiritually born again, that's how it's done. If you're not spiritually born again, you don't want nothing to do with that book. You listen to some guy's writings, and that's what happens. And again, I always like to read this because I believe this is uh, so real today. Second Peter two one. But there quote. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. All right? Now, today, and again, let me show you my name. I'm sure you can see it on the on the screen there. If you can't, well, you need to go to that eye doctor man, huh? All right, here we go. My name is Norman Edgar. I'm 71. Selma, my sweet pie, she's 69. And she is doing well today. We're going to be off the air for a couple of days <coughs> this weekend, so we're going to have a nice time. All right. Today, I wanted to talk to you about something I've mentioned many times in the past. All right? And I wrote down just a couple of notes because I want to touch on some stuff that... Uh, I want to talk to you about something that you hear if you go to church and... Most of you that are listening on the internet radio station at GodSpokesman.com and watching me on Periscope and Facebook Live, you normally don't attend the church on a regular basis if, in fact, you even go to church. All right. So you're. I'm going to take. I'm going to try to take this viewpoint that you have never. Uh, you have never been to to the church, or you don't believe in God. So I'm a, I want to try to explain to you something, and uh, see the the scripture says some, and this is the fine line that I have to walk all the time. It, it's a fine line, but the word says the Bible, the New Testament truth say. That when a person is not spiritually born again, that means the people in the churches that go to church, they're not spiritually born again. <laughs> okay, that's who we're really talking to here. Plus you, out there in Periscope land and Facebook Live, Internet Radio. And you're not a Christian, you don't claim to be. And, that, and this goes for you, as well as the people that go to church. To me, as a Protestant Christian missionary for 40 years, there's no distinction between the sinner and the people that go to church. The people in the church are just religious. But the people that don't go to church and the people that go to church are both good, morally decent people. Pay the law, pay the taxes. There's no difference between the religionist, Hindu, Buddhist, animist, Roman Catholic, and so-called Protestant religions are all the same. All of them are going to hell. Okay? And why do all of them go to hell? The simple truth is they reject the truths of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible. Now, when you talk to people that's in the churches, the religious people, in the Protestant church, oh, they say, oh, we believe the Bible. But they, they're lying through their teeth, and they know it. They believe their denomination. They believe what their denomination writes is the truth. 
Okay, so they substitute what the Bible says and doct indoctrinate the people with their denominational viewpoints that they've been raised up with all their life, just like Mohammed, some Roman Catholic, Southern Baptist, Amish, Mennonite, Hindu. They all do the same thing. There's really no difference. So, today, when I'm talking, I'm talking to the person that has no experience with religious things, and additionally talking to the religious hypocrites that fill the Protestant churches. That would be in India. That would be in Australia. That would be in the United States. That would be in Europe, Asia, Southeast Asia. Protestant religious hypocrites, Pentecostal, non-Pentecostal, Trinity Pentecostal, non-Trinity Pentecostal, all of them, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, Church of Christ, all of them, these people are not spiritually born again. They're religionists, okay? Now you that are listening and see me, you don't know that. You are in the clueless crowd. You just kind of got a vague idea that Religions are supposed to be good, but you really don't care, all right? That's about the lie. You got your own life, you're making your buck and whatever. Then if someone pins you against the wall about, oh, I, don't, I believe I'm from a monkey, you know, you go some stupid thing like that. But the fact remains, I try to talk to you people, the center and the sinners in the church called the religionists. They're sinners, just like the sinners. You're both in spiritual darkness. But one is arrogant enough to think they're a Christian, and that's the religious church people. They go to church every Sunday, pay some money every month, and they think they're saved. They think they know some Bible scriptures, and that's it. And they're going right to that streak of that to that lake of fire as quick as a bus can take them. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about legalism, legalistic preachers. All right. Now, there's a, one of the main things, and this I want to explain this a little bit in detail. There's a there's a great divide. And uh, that unsaved so-called religious preachers, I don't care, they've been preaching for 50 years. It makes no difference. When you're wrong, you're wrong, all right? It makes no difference how long you do it, and how many people follow you, and how many people love you, and all that kind of stuff. I don't care how many people you baptize. I don't care how many people you did this or did that to. The truth of the matter is there's a great divide between two particular doctrines. One is called grace, and one is called legalism. All right? Today, there are multitudes of people, billions with a B, that believe in legalistic religions. It means if you want to be in their religion, you have to do certain things. Okay? You know, okay, it, just multitude. Now, you can go to each religion, and you can see as plain as day. If you want to be an Amish or Mennonite, you got to wear these goofy-looking clothes and get a horse and buggy. You can't go in there and drive a car. You can't get a TV set. <laughs> you can't get electric to your house. There ain't dishwashers and all that. You can't do that. They'll throw you out. Okay? <laughs> you talk about occultic people. They are. And everybody's got this idea that they're some kind of pious group of people. They're a cult. Lost in legalism. All right? Take Mohammed, his followers, the Islamists, the women, Sharia law, bondage. You got to do this, got to do that. But people grow up like that in that kind of environment. They think it's normal. You talk to an Amish or men, I did think, well, what's wrong, man? You guys on the outside, you're the bad, evil people. We're the good people. That's what the Mennonites will say in Amish. 
And then that's the same thing all the Protestant denominations will say. We do this so we're good people. And the Roman Catholics are the goofiest ideas in the world. They'll pray to dead people bones. They made the sinful Mary, the mother of Jesus, a God to pray to. They are so far out and left. But if you don't do their sacraments, you're not a, you're not going to heaven. That's their straight up down doctrine. If you don't believe the Pope and bow down to his feet, you're you're going to hell. You can't go to heaven without obeying the Pope, man. <laughs> oh. Islam, same thing. You can't do anything. Buddha, get there and take that Buddha statue out of your house and put one about Jesus in the Bible and see how long you stay in Buddhism. You won't. It won't happen, folks. Okay, every religion, every one, the Messianic Jews for Jesus, oh, you can't eat this food, you can't do this on certain days, you got to do, if you don't do that, you can't be a follower of God. So that's legalism, all right? And every religion has legalism, all right? Now, you might be wondering that people that don't believe in religion, that's normally what they rebel against. It goes something like this. I don't want anyone telling me what to do, what I can see, what I can wear, what I can eat. All right, that's what... Uh, the non-church people think and say that's why they don't want nothing to do with church. It's a bunch of legalistic rules and regulation, the do's and don'ts. All right? And that's the way the church is today. Sad to say. And then it's just accepted as norm that when you're a religious person, you're a good person. <laughs> well, that's, that's the biggest lie from the devil. A good person going to hell. Good people go to hell. Good, honest, tax-paying, loving people going to hell head over heels. Okay, you go to hell because you reject Jesus. Jesus is the only way of salvation. Jesus is the only way you can go to heaven. You can't get there no other way. All right, so... We have this two doctors, one called legalism and one's called grace. All right. So legalism is easy, easy to see everywhere you go. You got to do this. I had a preacher man here in this state, and many, many of them says, if you don't pay God off, you're going to be cursed. You got to pay him off. If you don't pay God off, you don't pay him money, he's cursing you. And he says that every week. I listened to him. I just couldn't believe he'd say it. And I finally, I, I, it got so bad, I just can't go, I can't go back because it's not right. God doesn't curse you because you don't give me money. That's a cheap shot, all right? The preacher man is just not right, okay? And that's all there is to it. And you'll find out these legalistic preachers are everywhere. Whether they got a DD or a master's degree behind their name, they're all the same. It's about separating you from your money. And the biggest way, the easiest way, and biggest, biggest, largest way, or the easiest promotional scheme to separate you from your money is to tell you this type of thing. This, uh, all cults do the same thing. It's always the same method. It goes something like this. Do you, is your life going good? And most people will say, well, yeah, and are you happy? And then you can run this down. I, I mean, I can have, when I go out sometimes, I can say to a clerk in a store or a hardware store or wherever I'm at, I say, Man, these politicians, and man, they'll just run them down. I'll run them down. They'll run them down. We'll just run them down, right? Then we'll talk about something else. We can run that down. Everybody will run it down, right? Everybody does. You do it. I do it. Everybody does. We don't mean to do it, but you got to get out of that habit. I mean, you just can't keep running people down. 
<laughs> but the church guy, these cult leaders, you know what they do? Every church, Jehovah Witness, Mormons, Catholics, they all Protestants, they all do it. They all do it, man. They wait for Easter and Christmas, so you're really feeling down the dumps. Well, your life isn't right because you're not doing right. You're not living for God, and that's why you got all these problems in your life. If you just come to God, He's going to take your life and turn it around. How many times do you think you've heard that kind of th that message? All right? And you'll have people that have joined the church and didn't testify how their life had turned around. And their life really hasn't done anything except them going to a church. They're still doing their nine to five jobs, still working, so everything's the same. And yet they, there's something in man that wants to testify about God that he's working in their life. And, there, and people run to the churches with these flamboyant preachers to see some kind of miracle. And I know that for a fact. Because I used to do that. I went to one, I wanted to see miracles. No, I didn't think it was wrong. And I, I this, this brother Schombach was a guy, and he was worldwide for a while. I went to a couple of his meetings here in the St. Louis, Missouri area in the United States. And he's just, he is an absolute con artist. He, he spent, I know, at least 30 minutes up on the stage one time before anything started selling his books. Having people, uh, uh, ushers hand out to people uh, uh, advertisement for his books and tapes. If you want to raise your hand and they ushers go around to all the people and there must have been probably two or three thousand people in the auditorium. And this just went on and on. I sat there and I said, what a sham. This guy's wanting the money. And then I listened to what he was talking about, and it was the same old Bible verses. And he'd thump on them, and it just, it was, it was a scam. I, and now he's out. I don't know if he probably did. Now he's an old guy then. But it's always about the money and things like that. So, Legalism, if someone comes in and says, well, if you got problems in your life, it's because you're not doing something for God that you're supposed to be doing. If you just do God's commands, everything will work out better for you. Now, your head is telling you, yeah, I'm at fault because things aren't going right. And that's not necessarily true. Most people don't realize that they're living in an evil age, sin-filled age. The, and I've said this many, many times, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. You can be an everyday Joe not hurting anybody per se, going to hell that way, just a quiet unbeliever going to hell. And people can rob and beat you up, and you haven't done anything wrong as far as that goes, you know, except the, your unbelief in Jesus is the way of salvation. But you're not bothering him, and you get beat because we're living in an evil time. If you think that your life would change when you become a Christian, that all of a sudden everything's going to be peaches and roses in your life, well, you're nuts. You're listening to some fairyland preacher man. Trials, the sword. Jesus, I bring a sword, man. He, he going, you're going, you're going to catch it right from the get go. The worst people, the worst you're going to run into is your own family. I didn't say it. Jesus did, but everybody wants to deny that. Oh no, 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 not me, not my family. They love me. <laughs> You, yeah, I've, I've come to the honest conclusion that if you believe Jesus, your family is going to be fighting against you. A bunch of, if they aren't, they're a bunch of lukewarm, I'll do anything to get along. All right? Bible believers are few and far between, folks. Legalism, 
and grace. All right. Now, grace has nothing to do with rules and regulations that you, man, does. Okay? Now, I want to read you some things because I think it's better that you hear what God says about this part than hear me bloviate, as they say. <coughs> A little sip of coffee and we're gonna rock here a little bit all right I want you to just kind of sit back let me prop my feet up a little bit and uh, I want to read this to you and I think you're gonna be really surprised okay this is some these the verses I'm gonna read are about grace all right and I want this is going to be a comparison bes, between legalism, those people who practice the do's and don'ts, rules and regulation, versus the people that have grace. All right, now I, I want you to listen to what God says about grace, what grace is. It's God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people of the planet. But listen to the scriptures now. Ephesians. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. All right, you want to hear that again? For by grace, this is Ephesians 2.8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. All right? Galatians, listen to this. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. Yet you understand what that means? This is for you nincompoops out there. If you follow the law, the law expressly does one thing. It explained the Mosaic Law of the Old Testament specifically, expressly tells you what sin is. Goes in great detail about sin. 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 It, it shows you exactly what sin is. What God considers sin. All right? That's what the Mosaic Law does. It, it exposes sin and what it is so that man knows this is wrong. This is sin, but there's no, there's no salvation in the law. It just exposes what sin is. You get that? Okay, now listen to this again. I'll just start from the beginning. Galatians 2.16. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Okay, now I want to I draw your attention again to says, to be justified by faith in Christ. Now, what do you think your faith in Christ is about? Some people will say, oh, he's a Savior and he died for my sins. No. When it says faith in Christ, it means faith in what this man, the Christ Jesus, did. What he did, he was born, as it says in Matthew, the first chapter, the 18th verse, he was conceived from a sinful woman by the Holy Spirit of God. 
He was a God baby, and he grew up to be a God son, a God man, Jesus. His blood was sinless. He never sinned. He was tempted in all areas, but he never sinned. His shed blood on the cross was an offering to God the Father for the sin of Adam and Eve and all subsequent sins committed thereafter. All right. Just so you understand, it's the atoning shed blood of Jesus Christ that justifies all people. Not the belief in Jesus, that he's a good, well, good old boy, he's a prophet, he's a good guy, he's a first created of God or some other junk like that. No, he was God in the flesh. But if, well, let me back up. So that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. You can't justify in the law. It just exposes what sin is. But if, while seeking to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have also been found sinners. Is Christ then a minister of sin? May it never be. For if I rebuild what I have once destroyed, I prove myself to be a transgressor. And he's talking about returning to the law. The rules and regulations. Instead of having uh, justified by Christ and what Christ did for you, Freely by grace, the gift of God. You hear this? Listen to this first verse. For by grace you have been saved through faith in Christ. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Grace enables you to believe so that you can make that confession that of your mouth and believe in your heart. Listen to Titus. Listen to what it says. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to think about this a little bit. Most people hear this verse and the old preacher guy, the old legalistic preacher man will come in and blast right at you. That if you don't do these things, you're not saved. You're going to have problems. God's, God's curse to be on you. Now listen to this. Let me read you again how you trip you up on this verse. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Okay, good instructing us to deny ungodliness. What instructs us? The grace of God instructs us. The Holy Spirit, Luke 12, 12, shall teach you and bring all things to your remembrance, those that have been spiritually born again. The grace of God, the Holy Spirit of God will teach teach you and bring all things to your remembrance. Now pay attention because this, this is where everybody gets tripped up, right on these kinds of verses. For the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all men. Grace did. Not by you doing some legalistic do's and don'ts. Don't eat this, don't do this, honor this day or do this tradition instructing us what's instructing us the grace of god is instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly so if you're spiritually born again the holy spirit of god is going to what is going to show you that you're not wanting to live in ungodliness or have worldly desires and to live sensibly it's not about you don't eat this, you don't do this, you rules and regulations. No, that's legalism. And grace 
is the power of God that transforms you, not legalism. <sighs> Listen. <coughs> For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age. All right, who's going to instruct you? The preacher man wants to think that's his job to tell you what to do and how to live. That's not the preacher man's job. But that's what we want because we've got legalistic preacher people that teach if you don't come to this church and obey my rules and do what I say, you're not a Christian. They all religionists do the same thing. Everyone. I don't care what church you go to. It can be a pagan, a heathen church. It doesn't make any of you worship in a mountain. You better worship this mountain the way we say to worship this mountain. You better worship this cow the way we tell you to worship this cow. If you're going to say the rosary, you better say it the way we say to do it. If you're going to pray, if you're going to be water baptized, you're going to be baptized the way we say. If you're going to be an Amish person, you're going to have to wear these old funky clothes. <laughs> I tell you, it's, it's wild, but this, this is legalism. They're all the same, all legalistic. And that's all these people are, religionists, is legalistic people. All these people got all their doctrines written out for you to read. Why? Because they don't believe in the grace of God. They don't believe that grace, God's grace, is sufficient for you in your life to carry you on through. Listen to what it just says here. This is Titus 2.11. Listen again what the grace of God would do for you. That is if you're spiritually born again and really love the Lord above everything else. You're all mind, heart, soul, and your neighbor. But if you don't love God above your old wife or hubby or your children or grandchildren... It just means nothing to you. You'll be a legalistic do's and don't guy till you, till you end up in the fire. You can't go to heaven being a legalist. If you think you're justified by you doing works, you're not saved. You haven't been spiritually born again. That's the great irony here. People that think they're in the church think they're a Christian. They've been hoodwinked by the devil over and over and over. You know why? Because they refuse to read the New Testament. Let's read it again one more time. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of, of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Acts 15.11 This again, we're talking about grace and legalism. Grace, but we believe, this is a quote, Acts 15.11, but we believe that we are saved through grace of the Lord Jesus. God's power, strength, love, and favor through what Jesus did, the atonement. Look, when you say you believe in Jesus, that, that doesn't, you want to get to the core of this, just because you say you believe in Jesus was a nice guy and he's my friend and all that kind of stuff, you'll go straight to hell. Oh, I confess Jesus was God's son, and I really, I think he's a good prophet, a good man. I like what he says. He's got all these great verses, the ones I want to believe in. That's not what salvation is about. It's about what his blood did on the cross. The atoning blood of Jesus, sinless blood that he offered for the remission of sins. But most of you people don't understand any of that because you've been in a clueless church all your life. You're a religionist. But we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they also are. <laughs> 
being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Just what I said. You're redeemed by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb. Jesus is the Lamb. He was offered. He offered Himself. He knew He was going to die, folks. All right? Romans 5.15. Listen to this. This is the difference between grace and legalism. But the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abound to many. Let's read it again, all right? Listen up. But the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one many died, we're talking about the transgression of one that many died, we are talking about Adam sinning. And because he died, he brought sin and death to all humanity. That was what happened when he disobeyed God. It makes no difference if you believe it or not. We're in an evil, perverse generation now. Listen to this. This is Romans eleven six. We're talking about the difference between grace and legalism. But if it is by grace. It is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Ephesians 2.5 Even when we were dead in our sins, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. You can't be saved by doing the works of the law. Don't do this. The rules and regulation. You can't get saved by obeying rules and regulation. <laughs> okay? Listen to this again. This is Ephesians 2, 5. Even when we were dead in our transgression, sinful people made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Not by doing the works of the law. People justify their relationship with God because they pray five times a day. Because they say the rosary. Because they do the stations of the cross. Because they went through confirmation, water baptism as a baby. Uh, went to Bible college, repeated a sinner's prayer. Everything you can think of. <clears throat> Titus 2.11 for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Not obeying the, the Mosaic law. Am I here to you? Titus 2.11. For the grace of God has appeared. God's power, strength, love, and favor, grace has appeared. That means God appeared. Who appeared? Christ Jesus, the Redeemer. Okay, bringing what? Salvation to all men. Only that. Nobody else. You can't get it doing any rules or regulation, any church man. Any, it's just ridiculous. But it makes you think good because you think you're a bad person. Well, you are. You're in evil. You're in sin. But when you're transformed, regenerate, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're transformed. All right? The transformation is by God when you love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor. Ask for forgiveness of your sin. Believe in Jesus and obey the Bible. New Testament. Guaranteed. All right? That's right. I said guaranteed. You meet God's requirement, and it's a done deal. All right? And I'm going to read you some other stuff here I got on here, too, because this is good stuff. You're not hearing this, people. You're not hearing anything like I've been saying. All you're hearing about the do's and don'ts and all that junk. People don't know what they're talking about. These preacher men go to Bible college, got that reverend master's degree and DD behind. Don't listen to them yo-yos. 
Read the New Testament yourself. You'll see what I'm saying to you is absolute truth. Look, it's before God you're going to stand, not before me or some church people. Forget them dudes. Listen to this, Colossians 2. I'm going to read this from the New International Version of the Bible because it's easy reading. It's in today's English. It's going to help you, you sinner people out there. That's right. You're sinners, just like I was before I got saved. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea. This is Colossians 2. And for all who have not met me personally, my goal, this is the apostle talking, my goal is, Paul that is, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, Jesus, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, in Christ Jesus, not in doing the law, Kabbalah or any rest of that junk. The Torah. <laughs> Just goofy stuff. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in the body, I'm present with you in the spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. That means your firmness is in Christ's writings now, today, 2017. Don't listen to these church people. Don't read their doctrines. Don't follow any church group or teaching. Read the New Testament yourself. Do what it says and God will show you what he wants you to do. Spiritual fullness of Christ. Listen to this, verse 6. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as, you, as Lord, continue to live your lives in Jesus. Not as the Church of Christ, not as the Assemblies of God, not as a Presbyterian, not as a Lutheran, not as an Amish. In Christ, that means the New Testament writings of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. God. I, I just don't understand how people that say they, they're Christian people keep going back to the same rudimentary evil doctrines of the Protestant denominational churches worldwide. Year after year after year, they just keep going on. I don't understand why. Such hypocrites, deceivers, workers of iniquity, division and strife, that's all they do. Just, i got to read that again. It's good. This is in Colossians 2, verse 6. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, He's got to be Lord of your life. That means you're going to follow Him, love Him with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor. You're going to read and do what He says. That's how you become a Christian. You can't become spiritually born again and say, well, I'm not really going to believe what the Bible says. I'm going to believe what my church man says, my, my mommy, my daddy says. You go straight to that fire, you do that. Continue to live your life in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Your teaching has got to come from you reading the words of Jesus, the apostle and evangelist. You can't listen to me or someone else and say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian because I did exactly what Norman said, the missionary guy. You'll end up in hell if you're listening to me. You better listen to the word of the Lord in the New Testament plainly. So it is that no one take you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy 
which depend on human tradition and elementary spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Hello, just like I've been saying, don't listen to these yo-yos in the churches. For in Christ, all the fullness of the, of the deity lives in bodily form. This spiritual substance that we call G-O-D, this spiritual substance that has the power to create all that's known from the dateless past to the dateless future. Within this spiritual substance, we learn after Christ Jesus came to this earth and we read his Gospels, we determined that within this spiritual substance, he prayed to the Father. That Jesus was at the right hand of the Father. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit when he left. It came. And only the Father knew, Jesus said, when he, Jesus, will return to this earth. Jesus said to go and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you say Father, you're saying God. When you say Jesus, you're saying God. When you say the Holy Spirit, you're saying God. These three separate individual persons of God are known as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each with a particular function, yet they're inseparable. <laughs> you got false teachers trying to tell you it's all Jesus. That Jesus is the Father. That Jesus is the Holy Spirit. The only way you can believe that is you, do, you got to rebuke the Bible. You got to say the Protestant Christian Bible's a lie. A falsehood. If you're a oneness person, Jesus only apostolic, you're led by the devil. Simple as that. You're not saved. I don't care how many times you speak in tongue and prophesy, you're the devil incarnate. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through the faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. You become a what? A new creature in Christ when you meet God's requirements. When you were, verse 13 of Second Colossians, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God, get this, God, not you doing something to earn your salvation. God made you alive with Christ. Get off that stupid legalistic doctrines that you got to do something. Not eat certain food. Observe certain days. If you don't, you're not a Christian. You're not a follower of God. That's the devil's lie over and over and over. I can't tell you how many people I find on this planet 40 years as a Protestant Christian missionary that think they got rules and regulations to follow. If you don't, you can't be a Christian. You can't be part of our church if you don't do what I say or say. It's a devil talking in the churches. Well, you can't be a Mormon. You can't be a Jehovah Witness, not that you believe like I do. You can't be an Amish, not unless you want to get a horse and buggy. You can't bring your little Cadillac car and hear an electric run to the house and have a sewing machine and a washing machine. Well, we can't have that. You don't believe in that blessed virgin stuff and praying to dead people. You can't be part of our church. you got to believe the Pope is, is infallible. 
If you don't, you can't be one. If you know me, if you're not an Islamic, if you don't want to pray five times a day and do a Mecca thing, you can't be part of our church. If you don't bow down to Buddha, you can't be one of us. You understand? It's evil. All of it's evil. All of it in the Protestant churches, in the, in the world, the whole legalistic approach is evil, evil, evil. The apostle went against this doctrine of legalism hard every time he turned around explaining grace. But today you got sinful, rebellious preachers that continually flaunt God and throw this trash out there and the gullible people buy it and listen are ensnared by the devil. Listen to this again, verse 13, 2 Colossians. When you were dead in your sins and in the in and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. Jesus has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ that breaks the power of the enemy. I know that's a little bit over your head for you newbies or wannabes and you sinful sinners. You just don't get what that means. But it's that holy blood of Jesus that washes the sins away. And how can that be applied to you? you got to make a confession with your mouth. Don't you believe these jokers say, Oh man, you're saved, or everybody saved. Nobody's saved. Until you meet God's requirement. And confession and repentance are two things. Confession, you're sorry. You want Jesus as your Lord? Repentance. You are going to obey Jesus' truth as you read in the New Testament. Not what some church man says. You accept Jesus and obey that church, you're not saved. Simple as that. I don't care what they tell you. You're not saved and spiritually born again. I can't tell you how many people, when we first got on Periscope, I started talking about that, man, these religious fanatics come on here, call me everything but the devil. They think their church is right. You understand? It's all, they don't know nothing. They don't know the Bible. They don't know nothing. They take offense when you tell them they're going to hell. Because they've been told if they do the X, Y, and Z, they're okay. They listen to the preacher man. They don't read the Bible. They don't read what it says. They're clueless. They're the hypocrite. That's what the religious world is, the true hypocrites. Do's and don'ts. And they think that's how you have to live. You've got to be like a little Gandhi. Afflicted. Flagellation. Uh, uh, beat yourself some way. You got to do something. You got to earn it. That's They don't understand grace. Listen to this, verse 16. Freedom from human rules. Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. Want to hear that again? Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. Don't let anyone judge you. So if someone tells you you're not a Christian or you're not right if you don't celebrate the Sabbath, what are you going to tell them? The Bible doesn't say that, Mr. or Miss. But most people don't even read the Bible. They just follow any Tom, Dick, and Harry preacher man that comes along if he'd like them. 
Verse 17 of the second chapter of Colossians. These are the shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head, from whom the whole body, <coughs> supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the elemental, elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgences. It's a false thing. Legalism says you have to do something to earn what you God gave to you. All legalistic and all legalistic church people are going to hell. If you listen to your church saying, don't do this, don't do that, you're going to hell. This old thing that, oh, God's going to judge you when you get there by your good works, that's the devil's lie. You're not going to be judged by Jesus. You understand? Listen to me. You're not going to be judged by Jesus to go to heaven or hell. You're going to be judged on the degrees of damnation in hell. If you're saved, washing the blood of the Lamb, you're going to heaven, living for Jesus daily. Not some lukewarm, milk toast, wishy washy Christian. You're going to hell if you're that. You got to be faithful daily to the end. That's what the scripture says. That's what it means. That means you're going to love on Jesus every day and do what he says. You screw up, you're going to get it right. You say, God, forgive me, and get up and keep going. You want to become lukewarm in your faith? You're going to hell. God says he won't have anything to do with you. You think Jesus is going to judge you? Oh, man, I did this. I'm a good person. You're going straight to the fire. Judgment is going to be the degrees of damnation. That's the judgment factor. If you're spiritually born again, you're not going to be judged. If you're living right, you're going to heaven. It's the evil people that are going to be judged for the degrees of damnation. That's what that's all about. But nobody wants to tell you that. They want to tell you God's going to judge you. This false teacher, Osteen, says it all the time. He's telling you, don't, you don't need Jesus. Just be a good person and God's going to judge you. And he's going to, he's going to say, you're all right. You know, the false teachers, they'll tell you this grace doctrine. They believe that grace has saved everybody. <laughs> all you got to do is think that you're saved and you're going to be all right. You can do anything you want. It is so screwed up out there, folks, spiritually. You better get your Bible and read that New Testament because that's the only thing you're going to oh, That's the only rule in God you got. God's going to show you. You're going to read that New Testament. You're going to read the first book is Matthew. The first challenge you're going to have is verse 18. You're going to read verse 18. You're going to start thinking, is that true what it says in verse 18? Right? And, you're, and I want you to really think about that, what verse 18 says. 
you'll soon see that there's spiritual life after this world. Amen? All right. I think I've said enough today. You people are going to hell yet today if you haven't repented. I'm not letting up on you. All right? You're still going to hell. And the only way you're going to get out is if you get right. You know it. You're going to have to get on your knees before God, not in some church house. Don't repeat any sinner's prayer. It's not going to get you in. What's going to get you? You're going to have to be sincere with God. You're going to have to say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. I want Jesus, and I'm going to live right according to his words as I read and I understand. Don't go to them churches. Stay out of them churches, or you'll be right back in the same old boat. All right? All right, I got to go. I'm going to say adios on Facebook first. All right, we just signed off on that. All right, hit that done button. Okay, Periscope, you're next.